I dress women and girls from all over the world. No matter what color, what creed, what size, we all just want to have fun. You can always count on Mary for color and fun and glamour and a little sparkle. And you know, she kind of keeps moving it forward and doing it in different ways. Just generally a load of beautiful fabrics, well cut, simple shapes, with a, with a little bit of heritage, and that's Costello. It was just very Japanese, weird take on American culture. The look here at Julian, it's very sort of like fierce. Fierce and robotic. When we first spoke, he was talking about being inspired by Geiger and Machine A and all things robotic. So it's all about this strong black matte eye. And then everything else is, is fairly clean and gorgeous. There's just a little sort of like rubbing on the lips, a little bit of a sort of like a rosebud sort of color. But it's all about this sort of like matte velvet eye. I think by having this cloning makeup, it's sort of like every girl's got the same eye. You do feel like she's this robotic replicant. We're backstage here for Julian McDonald. As you can see, it's slightly crazy. Um, I'm here with L'Oreal Paris today. Uh, we've been creating some kind of like cool 70s esque, still slightly glamorous, still a Julian woman, but a kind of Patti Smith vibe. So the hair is going to be kind of slightly over the face. It's got a rough edge to it, but they're still sexy and they're still Julian. I'm using L'Oreal Paris Studio Pro Boost It Mousse, which is like a, gives me a really good base. I'm able to base the hair up and then I can work with blasting it dry with a Babyliss 3Q dryer, blasting it dry so that it gets kind of bone dry. And then we're using tongs, this sort of size as I'm here, and a slightly bigger size as well. And it just, we're creating a wave through the front but a bit of a curl and a bit of a bounce throughout the rest of the hair. His woman's always glamorous, it's always sexy, the dresses are beautiful. The collaboration between the two and the hair is always a big thing because it's so important that we nail that and we get it right so that she looks hot and she looks cool. Inspiration is about living in a, a modern world, a modern world where there is no space or no time. Space has been taken up by modern buildings, by architecture, time because time has been frozen by technology and the internet. So what do we do? We build taller buildings, more modern buildings. I think we all watch TV and films and thought, would we live in this metropolis of modernism? and robotic world. We live, we are already in the world of the future. This is the future, it's about women and about men who are modern, strong, sexy, and just wanna have fun. Well, you know what? I don't care about being consistent. I care about making women and men look amazing and sexy. I'm a glamour designer. I don't make ready-to-wear clothes. I make clothes to go out and have fun. And at the end of the day, what you do with those clothes? You throw them on the floor. I am not a scientist or I care about the philosophy of clothes. They make you look amazing, and then you ditch them, and then you move on. You know, I, I arrived in the morning and I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to stand up, but I, I actually hit the ground running and we were at Julian McDonald where it was like being in a nightclub, front rows full of celebrities and a lot of sparkle and shine and, and sparkly bits on everything. Red carpet ready all the time and his menswear collection as well that was really powerful.
I think Julian is total bling, glamour and glitz. Sex, in other words. He is the most OTT, fabulous designer we have in London. Listen to the music. Look at the guests. Everyone's here to have a great time. And they know, you know, that the dresses, what well, there are of them, are going to be tiny, sparkly, low cut, very short. Julian, he's amazing. I always really look forward to his shows because they're always a show. The locations are gorgeous. The clothes are fantastic, obviously, but also the music, everything is so thought out. And so Julian's shows are a real show. It might be 10 minutes long, but it's an experience. women and he wants women to look super sexy and fabulous I mean he really should be doing this show in Hollywood you know LA in some massive ballroom or on the beach because he's I think very American in his approach very Hollywood more glitz, more glamour. I've, I'm like really into my fitness at the moment, so like it was great being able to fit into one of his dresses comfortably. So I'd love to see more bodycon stuff that he does anyway, and he does it so well. I feel amazing, I feel amazing today actually, especially because I'm surprised I managed to get in it. And it's just, yeah, it's so glamorous, and it's, it's just a real confidence boost. Oh my God, there's so many. You know, it's like the United Colors of Gina McDonald. I dress women and girls from all over the world. No matter what color, what creed, what size, we all just want to have fun. It was fantastic, it was fashion fantasia. It was like a fairy tale of dreams. And she remembered seeing uh, Fantasia when she was a child. And it was all that just dreams, magic kingdom. And they had a live orchestra playing music by Hans Zimmer. And also that song that Bette Midler sang, The Rose. We were transported. Well, you know, I love color, I love fringe, I love a sort of John Fluvog style 1990s club kid shoe. So, you know, you can always count on Mary for those things, for color and fun and glamour and a little sparkle. And, you know, she kind of keeps moving it forward and doing it in different ways. So we'll see if one day she runs out of gas, but she hasn't yet.
I did. I thought it was great. I really, I, I, I was a little bit of a different take for her. Um, I did love some of her oversized jackets, and she had great prints. She just has really quality fabrics and they're really manufactured well, so it always looks elevated to me. I think from the beginning, she's been pretty elevated. It's a girl who's very smart, who loves fashion, but at the same time isn't a fashion victim and doesn't want to just wear the same thing that every girl's wearing. It's, you know, they're someone who can understand and have an intellectual conversation about fashion. The inspiration comes from all these period TV series, Game of Thrones, and one from the other. I sort of went back into Henry VIII's bedroom. I got some ideas of the way he used to dress his women. I understated it and I moved it into the 21st century. So they were basically taken out of Hammersmith Palais and brought them into central London, Soho, Chelsea, and that's where they are now. Irish fabrics from McGee's and Donegal, from wool woven fabrics in Como and Italy.
Certainly for America, the Donegal tree coats are pretty amazing. I'm very lucky I've got a stylist from New York, Sarah Dunn, who interprets my collection in a very simple way. Typical in New York is she takes everything off rather than add on. And so I'm very much a structure designer person. The one thing she brought to the collection was I had tights, she had leggings. So we brought in English latex leggings, great quality. They were very uptown. I work with a great tailor. All these clothes are made in East London. The pattern makers from East London, it's an East London team with a little bit of Spanish flair. Just generally a load of beautiful fabrics, well cut, simple shapes, with a, with a little bit of heritage, and that's Costello. It's great, it's my first time on the Saturday show, so it's a big day. But I have a really fabulous team, you know, Steven's doing your hair, it's my makeup, Sam McKnight's amazing hair, Marin's nails and Victoria's styling. I mean, it's a really fabulous team, honestly, one of the best. So. Well, this season I just kind of like, it was quite spontaneous. It's always the opposite from last season. So last season was quite dressy, it was super pretty. This season I just kind of wanted influenced by the street. And where we go from there was kind of like, you know, taking nostalgic kind of imagery from my teenage years. So it's like kind of early, mid 2000, you know, that skater thing. It's a bit bathing babe, I suppose, but um, a girly version of that because they don't do women's wear. But we did, we did those camouflage and leopard prints and tropical prints. It was just very Japanese, weird take on American culture. We always start from the music, 
and then the shoes, the hair, the makeup. I mean, it's just the shoes kind of dictate the attitude of the girls, and um, the clothes actually come last. So as soon as I get the character right, I will know, you know, the color palette or the shapes. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just all about feeling. Yeah. She's skater to go, a bit Japanese American. Her favorite flower is Hawaii flowers. Her favorite food is American diner. I mean, I mean, for me, I just need to come up with a food, a country, a floral every season for this character. It just makes sense to me. Yeah. Those cocktail dresses are actually two layers, so the under layer is actually a stretched star net, which is quite comfy to wear. And the top is a printed organza camel, so you've got that American army kind of feeling. But still, you know, you've got the puff sleeves, it's pink, you've got the plastic chain, you've got the floral, so it's still really girly. It's that kind of princess hanging out with the boys, basically, yeah. I loved it. It was fun. I went backstage and Sam McKnight was doing the hair, which is really great because Ryan is a really new young designer and Sam McKnight is like the biggie. You know, he does everybody. And to see him working backstage at London Fashion Week was fabulous. And the whole theme was sort of Hong Kong and Tokyo with a lot of Harajuku mixed in, you know, in Tokyo, Shinjuku and Harajuku, the two areas where all the young Japanese girls dress up. And it was just, it was a romp. And it was totally girly. Hello Kitty, we even got free Hello Kitty candy. And a bit of Hello Kitty too, obviously. Well, they approached me about 10 months ago, but it was, it was just such a huge, you know, company. So it's a, it's, it's a very long conversation. Um, it was meant to happen in spring, summer, but we, 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 go, we, we did it in full winter. I just thought it's a perfect fit. It, it, it suits the theme. So yeah, I'm very happy about it. I think the color palette is really consistent throughout. We're always like a pink with red. We're always like tone on tone, you know, yellow with pink. I think pink in some ways, it's almost like a neutral for me. I rarely do black, I rarely do white. I mean, pink for me is just perfect. It goes with everything, so yeah. It was just kind of teenage nostalgia. Not not even nostalgia, it was just like, it just feels right, because no one dressed like that anymore. I mean, the real teenagers don't dress like that anymore, just all wear black. I didn't know, it would just feel right to do it. Yeah, it's just gut instinct.